morning. Welcome to the National Museum of Natural History's Auto Orc and Insect Zoo. One of the exhibits we have here is an observation honey beehive. In fact, one of our staff members here, Elio Cruz, is working on the beehive this morning. What are you up to this morning, Elio? I'm actually cleaning and maintaining our exit tube for our observation hive. And as you can see here, so the visitors can see the bees coming in and out of the observation hive. Great. That, that's really important. It's a, a very popular exhibit. And if you see here, the queen started laying eggs in early March in this small frame, and they only took up an area about this size. Now you can see by mid-April, the hive is expanded, and by mid to late June, the bees will take up all of these frames here, and we have six of them. But let's focus on what's going on in this one frame of activity where there are lots of workers, larvae, and pupae, and probably the queen. Over here you can see the capped cells from which adult worker bees will emerge sometime in the next five to ten days. Right here, you can probably see some white glistening grubs way down in the cell that these worker bees are caring for and feeding. If you look closely here, you can see some bees waggling their abdomens, uh, waving them back and forth. That's what we call a waggle dance. Uh, one female worker is communicating to the others where a pollen and nectar source is and how far away it is. Let's head over to our Partners in Evolution Butterflies and Plants exhibit and look at some other pollinator partnerships. You can see this long-winged butterfly species from Central America here in our butterfly pavilion is stopping by the flowers, sipping nectar, and at the same time obtaining pollen. It's one of the few butterflies that will actually be able to extract nutrients from pollen. Well, let's head on upstairs into our research collections and see what Dr. Sean Brady, our bee curator, is doing today. There he is. Hey, Sean. Oh, hi, Nate. What you up to today? Oh, well, I'm studying these different species of bumblebees right now. Oh, wow, holy cow. Uh, is, is that the extent of the bumblebee collection here? Oh, no, we have lots of different species of bumblebees and thousands of other species of bees. Oh. You want to take a look at some of them? Sure, sure. Well, let me first put these bumblebees away. We store these bees in this special compactor. So as soon as it opens, I'll put these away and show you some of the other bees. So let me put away these bumblebees and show you some of the other types of bees that we have in our collection. So here's a bee that I think there's some pollen on it. So let's go take this out and have a look at it under the microscope. So let's go take this to Eugenia Akonsky, who's a biologist here at the museum, who runs the ant lab. Hi, Eugenia. Hi, hello. Uh, is it okay if we use your microscope and your computer screen to have a look at this bee? Yes, of course. Great. Okay. Thanks. So here we have a honey bee that's under a special microscope. And this microscope is connected to this large computer screen so that everything that's under the microscope we can see blown up here on the screen. And here we see a honey bee. We're looking at it face on so that we can see its, its head with its two eyes. Here are its antenna. Here's its long tongue. It uses this to, to drink nectar from flowers. And here are its wings. And here we can see the legs. And you, if you look closely here, you can see that there's some pollen that's stuck to these hairs here on, on the bee. This part of the bee is called um, a pollen basket, actually. And it uses this to pack in pollen and carry back to the nest to, to feed its young. So let's zoom in on this leg and see if we can see any of the pollen. And 
Now we got to change the focus here a little bit. And sure enough, we can see here that there's individual pollen grains that are stuck to the hair of the bee here. And if we look at this other part of the leg, we can see just a whole wad of pollen, almost like chewing gum, that's just all stuck to the side of this bee's leg. That's called the pollen basket. And this is actually how pollination happens. Some of these pollen grains get stuck to the hairs of the bee on one flower, then the bee will fly to a next flower, and a few of these will fall off on that other flower and will pollinate that flower. The reason why studying bees up close under a microscope like this is so important is that by looking at the different types of pollen on the bees and the way that they're shaped, we can tell which types of flowers the bees have visited. We have thousands of different bee species here in the museum, so by looking at their pollen, we can tell that different species of bees will visit and pollinate different types of flowers, all by just looking at up close what the pollen looks like on the bee. Well, we hope you enjoyed our look at the exhibits and research collection here at the National Museum for Natural History. So now let's head back live to the National Zoo.